I know from lived experience that you know when you're you're engaged and you're on the land and you're doing things like it's you have so much of your different senses that are you know activated engaged and stuff and it's it's something that stays with you for your life you know you don't you don't forget that it's like it becomes part of you and so I know that uh, there's no substitute for experiential learning for sure and just thinking about certain situations like how I under learned to understand what trees were which trees and you know what kind of properties they had and how they were useful and you know just things like that or how to read water where fish would be and you know that kind of stuff is you, unless you're there doing it I mean it becomes part of you and you do it that way that's I think that's the, the way education should be and I think Jacob subbed it up one time he told me yeah, that's true he says when you engage all of your senses you're not teaching your mind you're teaching your whole spirit when I was a little boy <clears throat> my mother would give me these to fish with to use yeah. that for bait oh look because they're very shiny under the water. The other fish, they see that, that attracts them and then they smell it. This was from two years ago, that thing. Yeah? Yeah. His heart is still pumping. Yeah. You play against the tree. I feel the swelling going. This is one big oh. one. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Do a good job, Kelly. Will you explain them again? Lots of practice. Mm -hmm. well, Lots of my dad yelling at me. That's not how you do it. <laughs> my grandmother is a teacher. My aunts were teachers. And you know, all the grand my grandmothers before that were teachers, um, not to, in a colonialistic school, but on the land, right? So I figured, well, I guess this is my calling. And then I had messaged Shannon on Facebook one day, and I was like, Shannon, can you help me sew this? I need help sewing that. And yeah, sure, come on over. So I went over to her place, and we were sewing, and then we got to talking about these camps again and I said you know that's something I always wanted to do was these camps with kids and connecting back with culture and language and the teachings and learning on the land and things because that's something that I missed out on a lot when I was a kid and the kids I feel are missing a lot on, out on that as well so uh, that's something that we I want to bring back especially in my own community of Kitigan Zibi and uh, she said, well, you know, I have this camp, it's called Odenewin, and we do all of these things, and I would really like your help in all of this, being a teacher and things. So I said, okay, I'm in. So we, we, I jumped in full force, and we did our first camp um, last summer, and we did it for about five days, and we had about 13 kids. And it was a lot of fun. The kids really enjoyed themselves. We took them swimming. They got to uh, learn some medicines. And we got a, an elder to come in and visit and, and do some teachings in regards to um, the creation stories and then the clan teachings and the fire story, which the kids uh, heard yesterday. So Odenewen to me is reviving all of those things that I feel that I missed out as a as a child that I want to bring back to a lot of the kids in the communities. A lot of everything here is to kind of like uh, bring back into the spirit, fulfill the spirit back what was taken or what was lost, or we did not have the chance to learn, considering the generational impacts of residential schools. So when that happens to a community or even a nation or, you know, so on, all of a sudden the community, the homes get so quiet and then the teachings stop. When you have a set of values like the Pike Constitution, you know, you're supposed to know how to treat a child in a very good way, how to teach them right from wrong, uh, how you present yourself in front of people or another nation. 
and how you treat your guests that come to visit you, you know, this is what Odenarin is about. Anishinaabe Odenarin is about how we speak, how we act, how we behave, uh, how we live on the land. Odenarin is just like who we are, basically. So that's what this is. This is why we call the Anishinaabe Odenarin. It's bringing all that back, which residential school tried very hard to take away. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're doing our part to bring it back. Hey,